Hi everyone, it's Vanessa Scotto from Math to Self. It's so good to be here with you again today. And I had a special request from one of my viewers to speak about grief. She said that not many people out there are speaking about the process of grief and what it's like to move through this very painful but very natural human emotion. So the first thing that I want to emphasize about grief is when I worked as a therapist and I'm working with people as a life coach, I do not try to stop this process. Grief is natural and it needs to happen. So unlike something like depression that we consider um, a perversion of your emotional state, an unhealthy, imbalanced state. Grief is a natural, alive process. Now, here's one of the dilemmas with grief, is that sometimes the sensations that can be evoked in our bodies, the stories that we attach to the sensations in our mind, can be so overwhelming for us that we shut it down that we repress our grief or we sort of displace it and act out in different ways, all in an effort not to actually have to experience it. And I know this firsthand. I've lost many important relationships in my life and sometimes the grief felt so unbearable that I would do anything to avoid it whether it was watch TV or whether it's go out with friends and have drinks or I'll admit I've smoked cigarettes, seriously, only when I'm grief stricken. But anything to mitigate the intensity of these sensations. Somatically, I push it down, I box it away, you tie it up. So what's the answer? Well, there's unfortunately no simple answer and that's a lot of reason why people don't just speak to grief so easily. But one thing that I can say is that by shoving it down or pushing it away, you're saying no to what is. In other words, the grief is natural and it is happening. It is a part of you. It comes in waves too, doesn't it? You know, there are moments when you feel okay, sometimes happy even. And there are other moments when you are just bam, hit with it. And you feel like you can't even get out of bed or you just can't stop crying. That is the nature of grief. It is cyclical. You know, your body does you this favor. If you're religious, you could believe God does you this favor of sort of metering it out so that you can tolerate it. But when you're constantly pushing it down, pushing it away, saying no to what is, because the grief is real and it's living in you, you actually create further problems. That's when it can become depression and it can linger and it can prolong. And then you can even act it out. As I said earlier, maybe eating too much, maybe letting go of what you're passionate about, maybe um, not functioning at your job or not showing up for your partnership. So that becomes a perverted state. Depression is a stagnation of emotions. It's not what we call a primary emotion. It's not alive, it's a shutting down, and it's usually caused secondary to something like sadness, grief, anger, sometimes all of them at the same time. So what does this mean to you? It means you need to be able to hit grief head on and allow it to be there. That doesn't mean every day you have a life, you have a job, I'm, you know, maybe you have kids, ways that you have to show up and function. But in some way or form, you have to accept that it's there and that it's part of life and that it's part of you and stop resisting it. What happens when you do that is it again becomes alive and things that are alive move through you. You know it, alive things grow. They move, they shift. We're never staying in one position too long. Plants even. They move towards the sun, they grow, they shift. So nothing alive stays static. If you let the grief be there, it moves through you. And here's the crazy part. I went through an just unbearably painful divorce a while back. And in that moment, when I would allow the grief that I was experiencing to be there, that believe me, felt unbearable at other moments, 
you can't believe what happened. I started to have moments of ecstasy. Now you've been watching my videos on ecstasy, I'm hoping. If not, please go back. This is my heart's work to help all of you be more ecstatic about your life. But you start to feel viscerally alive. There is nothing that can bring about a sensation of joy, of passion, of um, appreciation like the remembering of the temporality of things. So grief and aliveness often come hand to hand. As long as you allow the grief to flow through you and be present so that you're breathing, you're also taking in maybe the sunset, you're taking in the sound of voices, so you're really present. And number two, as long as you let go of the stories that come with it, and that's part of being present. The stories that compound grief, I'll never love again, I'm always gonna be alone, uh, the pain is never gonna stop, will I ever be normal? Those stories keep you trapped in a fear pattern. And in a way, what they're doing is re-traumatizing you. So let's break it down. Grief is in you. If you're going through a loss, it is so natural. It's a part of life. It's welcome and you have no choice about it. It's happening, whether you acknowledge it or not. But when you push it down and you push it away, it can become stagnant, that can become depression, and you can find you start acting out, overeating, over drinking, pushing people away. When you let the grief be there, and it may sometimes feel like a heaviness in your chest or a sickness to your stomach or like you're crying, but when you just let it be there, you say yes to it, and you try to breathe through it, and just be present, not allowing the stories to attach, but just maybe taking in, as I said, the, the sight of a bird flying or the sound of a child laughing, running around in the park, it becomes alive and then it can move. And that's the nature of grief. It's like waves, it's like an ocean. It comes in, it comes out. If you let it go in its own course, eventually the pain subsides. And in the process, you can feel very, very alive and appreciative of what you do have right now. If you have any more questions on grief or any topics you're hoping I'll speak about, please leave them for me in the comment box. I'm happy to address anything that's on your mind. If you like this, please hit like. Again, how do you deal with grief? Let me know. Thanks so much, everybody, and I'll see you next week on Map to Self. Bye.